Good evening, this is Beyond Wallet. I am Sumit Chaturvedi and let us go straight to our top headlines. In a fresh incidence of simmering differences with an Indian multinational giant Infosys, its founder Anand Narayan Murthy expressed displeasure at a salary hike of chief operating officer of the company. Struggling e-commerce major Snap Deal has sounded out five merchant bankers to work on a public offer that is likely to hit the market in the second half of 2019. Indian markets closed today at record levels with Sensex now 100 points away from 30,000 mark and Nifty closing above 9,200 for the first time. And not only India, but its import-dependent neighbours are also preparing themselves for India's historic taxation reform, the goods and services tax. Now, in a fresh incidence of simmering differences within Indian multinational giant Infosys, its founder Narayan Murthy has expressed displeasure at a salary hike of chief operating officer of the company. Infosys Enar Narayan Murthy has said that compensation hike to COO UB Praveen Rao, approved by the board in Feb, went against Infosys' tradition of fairness in compensation. He said, and I quote, giving 60 to 70 percent increase in compensation for a top level person when the compensation for most of the employees in the company was increased by just 6 to 8 percent is, in my opinion, not proper. This is grossly unfair to the majority of the Infosys employees who are toiling hard to make the company better. The impact of such a decision will likely erode the trust and faith of employees in the management and the board. This comes after a resolution within the company that came on March 31st to increase the total compensation of Chief Operating Officer UB Praveen Rao by 35%. However, most of the promoters of the company Infosys, including Narayan Murthy, abstained on the resolution. After this, Murthy provided an elaborate explanation for why he did not vote for it on Sunday. A message directly indicating differences between the founders and the board members too. Now moving to Indian e-commerce space where struggling e-commerce major Snap Deal has sounded out five merchant bankers including State Bank of India Caps and Kotak Mahindra Capital to work on a public offer that is likely to hit the market in second half of 2019. The IPO process is on and may open in the second half of calendar year 2019 depending on the market sentiment. Well the management has zeroed in on five in I bankers including SBI Caps and Kotak Mahindra Capital. Out of the five I bankers sounded out, it will pick only one lead banker that could be either SBI Caps or Kotak Mahindra. It has also sounded out top law firms, Amarchan Mangal Das, AZB Partners and Khatan and Company to advise it on the proposed share sale plan. Now, not only India, but its import-dependent neighbours are also preparing themselves for India's historic taxation reform, the goods and services tax. India's neighbouring countries like Bhutan is striving to update its system to match GST. Bhutan is India's partner in SASEC, or South Asia's Sub-Regional Economic Cooperation, which has been developed in parallel to South Eastern Association for Regional Cooperation, or SAC. I caught up with Linpo Namge Dorji, the Finance Minister of Bhutan on GSD and New SESEC initiative. Let's hear what he had to say. One of the, uh, one of the uh, landmark or the milestone would be that India has uh, just recently passed the bill in the GST and then uh, this would have uh, a long-term effect and then the, the uh, impact on uh, Bhutan economy as well. Uh, the benefit of the GST that would uh, that uh, my country will also uh, they have the benefit. So that's interesting point. But how will your country have an impact of GST? Uh, how will you imp be impacted by GST? Well, uh, uh, I think uh, I uh, take pride, or I think I need to mention that we import almost, uh, and our trade is 90% uh, with India. 
So obviously the uh, GST is going to have impact on us. So because uh, we have to have right now we have the, the sales and uh, sales tax and customs uh, excise. Now the uh, uh, when we have GST, we are not going to have the sales and customs uh, uh, excise uh, excise uh, duty. So the, we need to work on the modality that would suit. In, in fact, we are also working towards migrating to the GST because we have the firstly the free trade uh, agreement, free trade relation. Secondly, the, we import almost 90 percent of our trade uh, um, uh, goods and services from India, and then the, uh, we have so much of association in, in terms of import and export. So one last question, uh, you uh, are enabling other countries also, Nepal, China and India. So how do you see this overall you know, mechanism working as far as the all countries are concerned for you, how India is a favorable country? Well, I think, <clears throat> I think the common goal was uh, very similar to the SARC countries, but then some other SARC is not able to uh, uh, the take off. But uh, we, have, we are very positive that uh, the Sasek uh, uh, countries will take off. Uh, because there's not much uh, uh, common uh, um, problems or uh, common political uh, issues, so the, I think Sasek, uh, I think they definitely uh, we, we're going to have the benefit, and then the, so much common uh, achievement and uh, so much mutual benefit that would uh, that the member countries would have. Thank you so much for sharing this. Thank talks. you. Thank you. Now, the Indian government has raised rupees 46,247 crore rupees through disinvestment in 2016 and 17, exceeding the downward revised target for financial year. Well, this is the highest amount raised through disinvestment in a fiscal year. The government had revised the disinvestment target from rupees 56,500 crore to rupees 45,500 crore in the budget presented on Feb 1st this year. Of this revised target, Rs 5,500 crore was to come from strategic sales. The government raised about 8,500 crore through an exchange trade fund or CBSE ETF. There were seven buybacks of shares by state-run companies in which government sold some of its stake. Now moving to some global news where Russia's economy has expanded for the first time in two years in the fourth quarter of 2016. Data from State Statistics Service showed on Friday as it slowly recovered from a crippling crisis. Russia recorded 0.3% growth in gross domestic product or GDP year on year as Russia pulls itself out of a two-year economic crisis triggered by tumbling oil prices and Western sanctions over Ukraine. Russia's GDP last experienced growth in the fourth quarter of 2014 when it expanded by just 0.2%. Russia's GDP had contracted 0.2% overall last year after having shrank 2.8% in 2015. The Russian government expects 0.6% growth this year, which will be a growth in a way rather than degrowth. Now, Indian state refiners will cut oil imports from Iran in 2017 and 18 by a fifth as India takes a more assertive stance over an impasse on a giant gas oil field that it wants awarded to an Indian consortium. India is Iran's biggest oil buyer after China. These are among few countries that continue to deal with the Persian Gulf nation despite Western sanctions over Tehran's nuclear program. Close ties between these countries have now been strained since the lifting of sanctions last year as Iran adopts a bolder approach in trying to get the best deal for its oil and gas. Indian oil PSUs including Oil India Limited, Mangalore Refinery and Petrochemical Corporation will reduce imports by 20,000 barrels per day to about 80,000 barrels per day. Now to check counterfeiting of notes, Indian government plans to change security features of higher denomination banknotes of Rs 2000 and Rs 500 every three to four years in accordance with global standards. The move comes in the wake of recovery of a large amount of fake Indian currency notes in last four months after demonetization. The issue was discussed threadbare at a high-level meeting last week 
attended by senior officials of ministries of finance and home, including Union Home Secretary Rajiv Marishi. Home Ministry has advocated the move and officials said most of the developed countries change security features of their currency notes every three to four years and therefore it is absolutely necessary for India to follow this policy as well. Now, private education could cost 2 to 3 percent more if taxed at a lower slab rate of 5 percent under goods and services tax. The GST bill passed by Lok Sabha on March 29 carries a provision according to which certain services provided by government or local authority would not be liable to tax. The provision could extend the application and private education in India could become liable to tax once GST becomes law. So far, tax exemptions have been granted to both public and private institutions engaged in providing education. Now, stunned by Supreme Court announcement on not exempting hotels and restaurants from a ban on liquor vans within 500 meters of national and state highways from April 1st, the hospitality industry estimates that about 1 million employees could be hit by the order. Supreme Court on Friday ruled that its December 15 order on banning liquor vans across national and state highways is also applicable to hotels and restaurants. Marquee hotels like the Trident and Leela in Gurgaon and properties like Cyber Hub, which are in close proximity to the highway, are likely to be hit by the ban in Delhi. In Goa, the excise department has formed teams to make sure that order is enforced. As the Apex Court order will affect over 3,000 liquor joints and shops in the state. The world's leading badminton racket producer, Yonex, is all set to start manufacturing of the rackets in India, taking a leaf from Prime Minister Modi's Make in India campaign. Very good afternoon, uh, all of you. Um, uh, my dear friend uh, Vikram Dar, um, Mr. Saiko, and, and Yonex uh, and Sunrai have come together to um, set up a plant in Bangalore. Thank you very Under much. the Thank banner so made much, by Unex, the first set what of rackets will roll out from afternoon. June. The racket will we be made using Haraj company's Haraj signature Unex Isometric Champions. Built. Going forward, the company plans to produce more high-value products for the local market. Let's hear what Yonex management had to say on this whole issue. For us, the priority is quality. Of course, we spend a lot of money it, for the machines, uh, uh, but uh, that's the trade confidence, uh, how much we spend. And in terms of number of employees, and right now we, we start from around 20 people. With the recent dip in global crude oil prices to around $50 a barrel levels, the price of aviation turbine fuel or jet fuel has been cut by over 5%, reversing a trend of hikes over the last two months. Straight-run oil marketers in India have cut the prices of jet fuel by Rs 2,811 per kiloliter, which is 1,000 litre, or by 5.1% to Rs 51,428 per kiloliter with effect from Saturday last week. ATF prices are revised on first of every month. Rates vary at airports as per local taxes. In March, ATF rates were raised marginally by Rs 214 per kiloliter to Rs 54,293 in Delhi, while in February they were raised by 2.9%. Now, telecom industry in India owes close to 4.6 lakh crore rupees to various financial institutions and banks. Reliance Geo's announcement about complimentary offer for three months to those who pay rupees 303 prior to 15 April has further sweetened the deal for customers offering data at rock bottom prices. But COAI, the Silver Operator Association of India, is worried that Geo's latest pricing will continue to bleed the industry and there is risk of cascading impact on banks and others that have large exposure to the telecom sector. Markets move towards lower pricing is good for consumers, but the industry will continue to bleed under this pricing and there is the risk of cascading impact 
on the banks. Government and equipment manufacturers, the telecom industry owes close to Rs 4.6 lakh crore to various financial institutions and banks. And due to this pricing game, banks' money is at risk. Now moving back to aviation where Qatar Airways will offer free laptops to business class passengers flying to US in an effort to get around an American ban on electronics. In a statement, the Doha-based carrier said it would begin offering a laptop loan service to those travelling in business class from next week. The computers or laptops would be collected by US-bound passengers from their departure gate just before boarding, said Qatar Airways. A similar laptop proposal is being considered by fellow Gulf carrier Emirates, which is also affected by the US ban. Abu Dhabi's Etihad Airways, meanwhile, said it would offer free Wi-Fi and tablet computers to first- and business-class passengers on US-bound flights. The move comes after Washington earlier this month stopped electronic devices bigger than mobile phones from being taken on direct flights to United States from 10 airports in seven Middle Eastern countries and Turkey. A similar ban was also imposed by Britain, but this exempted some of the Gulf airlines, including Qatar. US officials said the measure was intended to thwart any possible attacks on airliners with small explosive devices hidden in consumer electronics. Now with this, it is a time for a short break on Beyond Wallet. After the break, we will continue with our coverage of markets. Stay tuned to Beyond. Mr. Jain. Hi. Thanks. Hi. Can you hear us, Mr. Jain? Yeah, yeah. Loud and clear. Oh, great. Lovely to have you on our show. And today is an auspicious day when markets are touching yeah, new yeah. high too. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Beyond Wallet and straight to markets coverage where Indian markets have touched new highs today. Trading in the green zone throughout the day, the market closed the day at record levels, driven by a rally in index heavyweights such as Reliance Industries, l &T, among others. The Sensex added, ended 290 points higher. Nifty closed above 9200 for the first time. The Sensex is now 100 points away from 30,000 mark. Well, indices witnessed a sharp surge in the last few hours of trade, pushing them at higher levels. The Sensex was up by 289.72 points at 29,910 points, around 80 points away from 30,000, while the Nifty was up 64 points at 9,237 points. We are joined by Saurabh Jain uh, from SMC Global. Well, good evening, Mr. Jain. Today happens to be a day when Indian markets have touched new high. When do you see them finally going and touching the 30,000 level. Tomorrow is a holiday, but do you see this happening finally on Wednesday when the markets open? Sensex will be able to touch 30,000 mark.
Yeah, I think uh, it's a, a matter of time because the optimism is still there, backed by a strong liquidity. You know, people are people are quite optimistic that the India would see the growth coming back after the remonetization happening. And uh, you know, if you look at the indices, maybe on the P basis they look uh, a bit stressed. But uh, you know, considering the flows we are getting, the reflation trade which is happening over the globe because of the optimism about the U.S. economy is reflecting in the emerging markets too. And India. Uh, uh, you know, uh, looks to be a major beneficiary considering the foreign flows coming in the stronger rupee, especially after the you know uh, government e uh, winning uh, UP elections, um, a thumbs up victory, and you know the passage of bills looks uh, uh, looks uh, you know uh, like uh, the things will go fine. Uh, also, the optimism is coming from the GST, which is uh, which is uh, looking to be on schedule. The earnings season uh, in the earnings season, maybe we, we we may see some stock specific activity, but the the current you know undercurrent tells that the uh, you know maybe the insiders are looking beyond the earnings season. Do you think the uh, RBI's monetary policy announcement on Thursday can put a spanner in this optimism, though it is widely expected to maintain the status quo? But do you think any kind of change over there can put a spanner in this optimism in where markets are touching new high? You have rightly said that the you know the the largely you know people are of the opinion that there there would be a status quo, but two, uh, but there are two major factors. One, the crude have, uh, crude prices have you know uh, have uh, cooled off, uh, which may means that uh, RBI may give a possibility of a future rate cut. And another thing is the huge liquidity coming into the system because of the demonetization effect. It is because of this very reason that RBI looks that uh, they are not coming to the market to rescue the you know. Uh, 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 coming up huge quantity of dollars and uh, which is giving huge appreciation to the uh, to our currency rupee and these these are the two major factors which will uh, 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 investors will be looking upon in the coming corporate results season which will start in few days from now do you think that optimism will uh, ca you know can go up further because if the results are good again the stocks will go up what do you think about the coming corporate results season See, from the earning perspective, I don't think see, I don't think so. There would be much, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, uh, cheer about uh, per se. Uh, largely, the earning season starts with the IT biggies, and uh, I guess that that there would not uh, uh, there would not be ma a major optimism. It is the body language of the management which tells how they perceive about the you know business coming from the US, Europe, and uh, largely, I think the you know people are people would be you know uh, spending uh, you know putting money on the consumer dish. Traditionally, side uh, consumer durables and automobiles have started doing well uh, after this BS4 uh, emission norms. I think automobile companies, auto ancillary companies, uh, would be the key area people would watch for. So clearly, the financial year has started on a very positive note for the markets. Where do you see markets headed uh, by the end of current calendar year? Will they touch further? Sensex has the capability to, to touch. 35,000 mark or Nifty will touch 9,500 mark. What is your sense as far as the overall year is concerned, which is ahead of now? Probably markets would t uh, would continue to see fresh highs, but there would be you know patches of you know uh, there would be uh, some mild corrections because uh, we, uh, from the earnings point of view, I don't think so. You know, uh, it would continue to support that kind of uh, you know huge run up. It is largely supported by the liquidity and any 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 concerns pertaining to liquidity may, may give uh, jerks to the market. So all in all, I I expect that the uh, broader indices would be in the positive territory by the closing of 2017. But there would be, you know, uh, 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 patches of corrections. So, these patches of corrections, when do you see them coming, or do you think that the market will take a breather before accelerating further? What do you think about the the, in the short term markets? How are they going to react? I think in the short terms, uh, markets are looking quite confident, and you know it is only after the month of April people will you know um, uh, will uh, you know make a good judgment of how the earnings uh, season will uh, you know uh, pan out in the future, and uh, according to the management guidance also, because by the end of the uh, m month of April, uh, largely 50-60 percent companies covering the major indices would be out with the result season, and before that, I think the journey looks to be fine, uh, supported by the huge liquidity.
And any specific stock rec recommendation or any sector which you would you know, like to recommend our viewers as far as this optimism or bull run is concerned? What should they you know, invest in as far as this bull run is concerned? I think auto stocks looks good to me, auto ancillary tire stocks because of the, you know, uh, uh, rubber prices have again cooled off, which we, uh, which would boost uh, tire companies' margin. Uh, stocks like Arvind Limited, Syntex, uh, these are some of the stocks uh, which, are look, uh, which are looking good to me. And how do you see banking stocks to behave in the earnings session? Do you expect them to go up further from here? I think the NPA problem will still pers uh, will uh, will persist, and we will see the huge provisioning coming up uh, coming in in the March quarter. Uh, pe people would like to know what the government and RBI is doing on the you know NPA front, whether the large corporates who have you know who who have uh, you know uh, gone into the NPA basket. What would be the resolutions for the same? I think markets will be watching for the resolution of the NPAs, and if and when uh, some concrete you know things come up and. Uh, uh, which will give confidence to the markets. I think uh, these are the, uh, PSU banking are the stocks uh, which can uh, which, which which can be a very good uh, bet. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Jain, for talking to us today. Well, today is a historic day when uh, Sensex is within a kissing distance of touching 30,000 uh, mark, while Nifty has also touched uh, a historic high closing above 9200. So that's all for Beyond Wallet viewers today. For more news and updates, stay tuned to Beyond and thanks for watching us.